Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, and I've pulled up an image that I shot over the summer of OAR, and on the left I have the image that I already edited, and I like how it looks, and I want to just show you guys my workflow, get you an idea, so in future videos there's no surprises when I do something, um, and kind of give you a little bit of what I look for when I'm editing. So let's get into this shot. And for those of you that are going to ask, it was taken at 200 millimeters, f5.6, 1 250th of a second, and ISO 4000. Now, why would I go for ISO 4000 and 5.6? Well, the, the answer is I was farther away than I wanted to be, and if I were to shoot this, say, at 2.8, then I wasn't going to get quite as much detail as I wanted. I kind of liked a little bit of the detail in the background, so I went for just a little extra depth. And at 4,000, I was able to get the 250th of a second, which let me freeze him in motion of him looking right at me and not get any kind of blur. <clears throat> so right off the bat, this raw file is very, very flat, which kind of comes from the fact that there was a lot of fog on there, and the background was just being blown out by that light, which I wanted. And so I intentionally overexposed the shot just enough um, to allow the detail in the shirt to be retained when I dropped the exposure down. And I know that there's noise. There's going to be noise. It's at 4000 ISO. I'm going to do my best to get rid of that noise. Right off the bat, though, I noticed that the white balance is just a little off. They had this red fill light kind of coming in here along his face. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just drop that down quite a bit here. We're going to go down, I think right there, 2889 looks good. I'm not going to touch the tint. There's really no reason to touch it. it the Color-wise, it's fine. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the exposure. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come down probably, that looks a little too, I'm going to go minus .60 on this. And I think that should be, yeah, I like how that looks. And I'm going to bring my contrast all the way up. And I don't know if you've noticed, but right here behind his head where the light is, as I'm increasing my contrast, that is becoming brighter, but it's also feathering it out so it's not so oddly shaped by the fog and the extremities of the light. And what that also did is bring in a lot of detail uh, to the darks, a lot of the dark, dark details into it, and allowing him to pop off of the background so he's no longer just stuck into nowhere. And I'm going to increase my shadows because I did lose a little bit of detail in the dark areas. That looks too much. I'm going to come back down. I'm going to say 30. 29, 30. Let's see. I'm going to go with 30. And then I'm also going to drop my black levels down. Um, just to reintroduce a little bit extra contrast and give me just a little bit more pop on this image. I'm thinking minus 20 is going to be where I want to go with that, and I like that. That looks really good. I'm going to increase my clarity only plus 2. I only touch clarity really if I'm doing a landscape and I need it for something very specific. We'll go over that later. I'm going to come to vibrance next, and I'm going to go minus six, I think. I like how that's looking. Minus six on the vibrance. And that's it. I'm done with the basics panel. And I'm going to come down next to my detail. I'm going to let that open. And I've already got it preset right here to the eye, um, the sharpest of the two eyes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 33 because I remember from when I did it last that that was where I liked it. And what that does is it introduces more of this grain and artifact into the image. And one way that I can get rid of that is to use the noise reduction tool, which will blur out the image. And you'll see that eventually when I do a tutorial with it. But right now, what I'm going to do is the masking tool. And I'm going to go ahead and press on the Option key on my Mac, which will be the Alt key for any PC user. And what you get when you click this masking under Sharpening is a white screen. This white screen is everything that that sharpening that we just did is affecting. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and drag it down. And I'm going, 
I'm liking 96, and what's highlighted left is just basically an outline of him and around the eye, and that's going to limit that detail. So now, as you can see in this small box here, that we got rid of a lot of that noise and a lot of that grain, and it still retains its sharpness, which is what I wanted it to do. I'm not going to touch lens correction on this image. I shot it at 200 millimeters. There's no need for it. Um, I'm going to go into this effects panel, though, because what I want to do is I want to really bring out this halo effect that's going on. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to low increase myself a vignette by going backwards on the slider. And I'm thinking somewhere around minus 14, minus 15. Yeah, minus 15 looks good. And what I'm going to also do is change my midpoint. I'm going to make it a little bit more rounds. I'm going to go about minus 21 on that, and I'm going to increase my feather all the way up. And I'm going to take my roundness, bring it back in. So now I've kind of created this real nice deep halo against the background. And it really makes Mark from OAR pop off the screen, and that's what we wanted to go with. Real quick, I'm noticing right here there's a spot. And normally those are hard to see, but because it's against the white light and a bluish tint coming from the light in the fog, it stands out and I can see it and it bothers me. So I'm going to go ahead and click the clone brush tool or the clone stamp removal, the circle with the arrow, and I'm going to make sure it's set to heal and 100 on opacity. Now I'm going to come and click over it with a brush just a little bit larger than it is, and I'm going to drag up to an area that I feel would best match and I'm going to let it do its magic. There we go. And it gets rid of that spot, so I no longer can see it. And that's really the only spot that's bothering me in this entire image. So I'm done with that tool. Now I'm going to come over to my brush tool right here. Open that up. And what I want to do is I want to get some detail back here in the sleeve uh, on his arms and a little bit on that in the shirt he's wearing. So to do that, I'm going to just go ahead and paint the darker areas of him, like so. And then I'm going to come back up to my shadows. I'm not going to do the exposure because that'll add a bit of a funny look to it. By doing the shadows, it'll just pull out some of the detail. Don't want to go too far. Maybe I'll increase a little bit of that highlights. Exposure, not going to want to do, like I said before. And I'm pretty happy with that right there. So I hit my uh, enter button, get me a new brush. And what I want to do is remove a little bit of this excess red in the shirt and kind of on his face and neck and uh, underneath his lip there. For the shirt, what I'm going to do, though, is a little bit different than what I would do for the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go just paint over it with this brush tool just in the shirt area. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the white balance on it a little bit more than I did before. Just to make it a little bit more white by going towards the blues. And already that pulls out some of that red and gets rid of it. And then I'm just going to desaturate right here. Just a touch. I just don't want to go too much on it. Just enough to pull out any of that excess red that's bothering the eye. You still want to keep a little bit. So minus 33 on that. Now for the skin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another new brush. And I'm going to just go over the areas of the red that are bothering me on the skin. And I'm going to paint the red areas. And there's a little bit in his hair. I'm just going to kind of quickly touch that. And I'll do a little bit more towards the blue because it does give a nice more even look but I still need to desaturate that red some, so I'm just going to pull back not much, maybe minus 10, just enough to kind of get rid of the harshness of it. And I think I like that. That looks really good. So the next thing that needs to get done when it loads, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush tool, I'm going to make it smaller, 
And I'm only going to do the eyes. So to see what I'm doing, I'm going to make sure that this little box is checked. And I'm just going to paint over this. Iris. Not the pupil, not the white. For the love of God, don't touch the white. And definitely don't touch the pupil. And I'm just going to go and just paint them over. Just like that. I'm going to hit the O button, get rid of that. And I'm going to zoom back out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the exposure. And I'm just going to kind of increase it little increments at a time. I think plus point two looks good. And what I want to do is I want to add some highlights to it, just because there is a little extra light that I can pull out. And I'm thinking plus six gives him just enough detail so he's not so dark-eyed and just black voids in the eyes. And I like that. I think I'm pretty much done with that. I'm going to do one small tweak. I'm noticing there's a lot of flare going on up in here from that backlight. And I like it, but it's just a little overpowering. So what I want to do is I want to come down to my highlights under the basic module. And I just want to kind of bring those back just a little bit. Maybe to... Minus 25. See if that looks good. Yeah, I like that. That, that to me, looks like something I'm happy with. And that's it. Not that difficult. Not that long, pretty quick, 10 minutes or so, and, and you're done. Um, let's compare it to the original file. And yeah, I mean, that looks almost identical. The only difference really being is I left more of the red, uh, the original edit, in. Um, today I just wasn't feeling it, but when I edited it the first time, I kind of was. But I like it. I like how it came out, and it just goes to show that it doesn't take much to make an image really stand out from a RAW file. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and I will see you here on the next tutorial.